In this video, we're going to get into some advanced formatting techniques using CSS. This is what the finished product is going to look like. It's a very simple resume where I've broken down and styled different things by ID, by class, by element, by combined element. There's lots of ways to select and style things. So let's quickly take a look at the page source. Pretty much what I want you to see here is how we're using IDs and classes and the different things that have gone into this. We, so we have the, our, in our body section we are using our container. You're going to see me use that pretty much every time. In the container we have a header that has an H1 in it. We're using HR, that's a horizontal rule. And you'll notice it's self-closing. We have an article. We have another H1 tag, another horizontal rule. We have a section with the ID objective. Another horizontal rule. We have a section with the ID of skills. We have an unordered list. We'll be doing some formatting with that. And we have another horizontal rule, a section with experience, and this is where we start using classes. The difference, the primary difference between a class and an ID is that you can use a class multiple times. So you'll see me using the class employment multiple times. Now we have a div with the class of employment, a paragraph with the class employer, a paragraph with the class of title, and a div with the class of dates. That's going to become very important. And at the bottom, we have a section for education, and this has two divs in it um, with a class of school for each one. Now again, this is not necessarily a good way to format things, but I just want to show you the way the formatting is, is applied. Now you'll notice here that I'm using a comment, and I've commented out all of the CSS tags. I don't want to have you watch me do the programming every time I do this. I just want to talk about each one one at a time and add them in. So when I move the opening comment that makes the body tags suddenly apply and leaves everything else commented out. This is a common error checking tool for programmers where you comment out the code that you don't want applied so you can determine what's causing an error. So you'll see that I have three properties that I'm changing for the body. The background color, the font family, and the font size. And so when I click here, you'll see all of those applied. Now with the container, we're modifying a div which has the ID of container. When you are doing styles for an ID, it has to have the hashtag symbol in front of it. And for the container, I've set up the background color, the width, and the margin, 15 pixels in auto. And when I do that, by using 15 pixels for the margin with auto, the 15 pixels is the top and bottom, the auto is the sides. When you do auto to the sides, it will center the whole div. div. Now here I have header and h1. I'm doing this to show you that you can specify just h1 tags in the header because we have just h1 tags in the article as well. So when I apply this, I'm changing the font family to one that's a serif, the color, the alignment, and the font size. So it's the header h1. It's going to be this one here, Mary Winchester. Now we've changed the article h1. Again, we're combining the different tags here to be as precise as possible, so it's h1's inside of the article. Again, we're changing the font family, the alignment, italic, and family size. Now we could have done this a slightly different way. We could have done h1 because the color, or I'm sorry, the font family was the same for each. I could have just used all h1 tags with this font family, I, did, I chose not to. It's just a question of which would be more efficient in one you're writing. I have several H2 tags, Experience, Skills, Objective. 
and here you're going to see that I'm using a font variant for small caps. Then I have the horizontal rule. Now there's some argument about whether or not you should use a horizontal rule. To me the primary advantage is that you can set the width to be less than 100%. Many people recommend just putting a line on the bottom of your, just putting a border on the bottom of whatever um, section is above it. I do like the horizontal rule and you can do some basic specifications to it. Color, height, width. Now you're not going to really notice it here. It does change color. But again, if I check it in Firefox, you'll see that we now have reduced width, so the horizontal rules don't go all the way across. And that's why I like to use that instead of changing the border on a section, which it's harder to control the width that way. Each section is going to get a padding of 15 pixels. That's the whole way around because I did not specify. And I did that largely because I think it's too close to the side here. So it spaces it out more up and down as well as in from the side. Just to show you how you could do it, not that I really care deeply, you can change these circles to squares. Employer is a class. You know that we're modifying a class because it has the dot in front of it. And so anything with an employer class, maryhelp.net, McHenry County College, will suddenly get a font weight of 800. Then I have a title class, that I'm going to make italic. So that would be my title here and here. Then I have a class for the dates, and this is a Di this is a class that's on a div, and I make it float to the right. So the dates here and here are going to turn bold, get a larger margin, float to the right, have a width of 30%, and do a text align to the right. Let's go ahead and apply that. And so they appear to disappear over here, but you can see it's floating over on the right-hand side. Now to really make it look the way I want it to, I'm floating the employment box, which includes both of these, to the left with a width of 45%. Now this looks a little funky at this point. What I want is for this to be on the left, this to be on the right, and the paragraph to be underneath it. Well, there's space, because I didn't use 100% of the width here. This is 45%, this is 30%. I have a couple ways to solve that. But the easiest is to do what I did, and just clear them so that the paragraph doesn't get floated. So when I say hit the paragraph, it will clear any floating that's above it. And so now, the two other objects are floating above it. And they've got specified padding for top, right, bottom, and left on how I want them, want the padding to sit. And then at the bottom, I just have a class for school. And that simply is going to separate these with a bottom margin and some extra padding, just to make them a little separate. Again, it's not necessarily the best looking page, but it shows you how to do some more in-depth selections of IDs, classes, and get drilling down so that you can specify items within a header, within the container. You can get really specific. And when you're done, you should see that it looks significantly different. Now notice in Chrome that color for the horizontal rule doesn't come through. It's okay. It's all right that browsers interpret things in different ways. So we have them side by side. And they aren't appearing exactly the same way, but in something like the horizontal rule like that, it doesn't really deeply matter. 
You could also put a background color into this and that might help it. You've got to sort of play with it on each different um, browser to see exactly what your results are going to be. Now if you were just doing the, this is the alternative to the horizontal rule which is why I showed it, where I just put a bottom border in. So you have various options and we could have changed the size of the box to give you that sort of illusion as well. So those are some different formatting tools and how to select do some more advanced element selecting to modify the formatting on your pages. Your assignment will be similar. You will also do a resume with various sections and classes and you should use multiple classes, multiple IDs, and customize each area or region and definitely anything that's going to repeat like in your experience or your education you want to use a class if you're going to formulate something that's going to exist more than once.